Last Thursday, Lord Justice Leveson delivered that report in the press. The current safeguards are woefully inadequate. He said the industry's own plans for a new body were not nearly good enough and Parliament had to act to guarantee that the new system had the scope and the powers and the independence it needed. The case for a legally enshrined structure has been championed by many of those who've been victims of press excess, including the actor Hugh Grant. A couple of months ago, on the eve of the Tory conference, I interviewed both Hugh Grant and the Prime Minister on the same show. And back then, it seemed that the Leveson report might get a warmer welcome in Downing Street. You, you, you told him uh, that if what Leveson suggested was not bonkers, you would implement it. Is that still the case? Absolutely. And, you know, we've got to rewind and remember why this thing was set up in the first place. Absolutely. Well, what now? With Ed Miliband urging his MPs to endorse the campaign for formal new laws, Nick Clegg saying publicly that he disagrees with the Prime Minister, and many Tory backbenchers urging David Cameron to hold out against any statutory regulation, it seems that the way Leveson is implemented will be fought out on the floor of the House of Commons. Joining me from his constituency in Essex is the chairman of the Culture Select Committee, John Whittingdale. And here in the studio is Hugh Grant. Uh, Hugh Grant, first of all, um, were you uh, surprised when you heard what the Prime Minister said? You would be sitting there like everybody else watching it. Was it genuinely a surprise? Yes, we were. I just read the report in a locked-in room with a number of um, the, the true victims of this, I, which I don't include myself, but I was in a room with the Dowlers, the McCanns, etc. And um, we thought the report was intelligent and clever, but mild. It was at the mild end of what everyone hoped mm. for. But we thought the upside of it being mild is that there's no way that the Prime Minister can't endorse this. Um, this is something that can get through. So we then sat there in a room with uh, the hacked off room with a bunch of um, 50 or 60 other ordinary, you know, non celebrity victims of uh, people like uh, the Hillsborough mm -hmm. Families Group uh, watching the Prime Minister speak in the Commons, and the feeling was one of astonishment and uh, betrayal. It is a very complicated proposal. Can you explain why you think statutory le legislation underpinning this new body matters so much? The, um, it simply won't work without it. We've had seven attempts in the last 60 years uh, to allow the press one more chance at regulating themselves, and each one has been unsuccessful. It simply beggars belief that mm. uh, the Prime Minister can think on this eighth occasion that it's going to work this time. Uh, and it's extremely mild. What the judge recommended was very mild in terms of yes. statute. One of the statutes was, let's enshrine freedom of the press, its independence from government, in statute. A First Amendment. Yeah. We, haven't, we won't see that reported in any of the newspapers. Um, I want to come back to you in a moment. Let's see if we can talk to John Whittingdale. Um, John, were you surprised by what the Prime Minister said? I mean, you know, a lot of Conservatives are standing up against any kind of legislation. That seems to be a growing feeling inside the party. I wasn't surprised because I think the Prime Minister made some very strong points both about the real concerns of the principle of legislating over the press and also actually about some very genuine practical difficulties about some of the proposals that Lord Leveson came up with. But I would just say to Hugh Grant, he, he said we can't have the press regulating themselves, it's failed. It has failed and that is not now what is under uh, discussion. Everybody agrees that there needs to be a new body which needs to be completely independent of the press uh, with real powers to impose penalties on newspapers that break the code. Um, that is the the first time that has happened and there is no disagreement about it and that will result from Leveson. The only but, debate is whether or not the body has to be underpinned by legislation. But the discussions to create that new body are being led by the press themselves, by the, by the editors and I suppose the suspicion will be that in the end they will produce something that satisfies them rather than people like Hugh Grant or the, the other victims in the hacked off group. Well, obviously, the editors have to be involved in the discussion because if the body is to work, then the newspapers have got to make it clear that they accept uh, its rulings, that they will sign up, that they will obey the code of conduct that is laid down. But they mustn't actually be the people who judge whether or not the rules have been broken. Lord Leveson was very clear that there should be no uh, MPs, indeed, or, or journalists sitting on the independent body. Um, and that, I think, is something which I would agree with uh, and which we must now look to all the newspapers to sign up to. If they don't, 
then it may be we would have to move to legislate. But we have real concerns about doing so, which is why I think it is so important that we at least give a chance to the industry to prove that it will, regula it will accept regulation mm. without okay. legislation. Okay. Hugh, may, I, may I come Hugh in Grant, on that? Yes, of course. Well, the people who are going to sit down at this meeting of the editors on Thursday, I believe it is, to uh, devise this new form of so-called independent uh, regulation are this exactly the same people who uh, came up with the PCC, which is widely discredited by everyone now, the same people who came up with the Hunt Black Plan, which the judge said we came, fell far short of what was required. Mm. It is the same people. Those people at that meeting on Thursday will be Lord Hunt, Lord Black, and Paul Dacre will be chairing the meeting. And if the public thinks that that is a satisfactory arrangement, that that's likely to come up with a proper independent regulator, well, they must be mad, but they're not mad, which is why 80% of the public, we know from a poll last week, favour an independent regulator underpinned by statute. What the judge did it, so it, cleverly so it, was to keep, the, keep government two arms but, but, lengths away from the press. So you have an independent regulator, but all, there is the, no all difference. the government uh, appoints. John, yes, I, I just want to bring John Whittingdale in on that moment there. John. Now, th there is actually no difference between... Everybody agrees there needs to be an independent body to regulate the press. That is what Lord Leveson is proposing. That is what we are proposing. The passing yes. of legislation is only necessary if the press then demonstrate that they will not accept the rulings of that body. So it's up to the press to prove that they will go along with it. If they don't, then the, the may, may need to be legislation. Uh, no, but in terms what, of the actual give, body, give them a we all agreed show? about what it should be. Why would we give of? them an eighth chance? to show that they, that they will fail to do that, uh, letting down the, the, the victims of, of all these abuses and favouring, uh, once again, the press barons and big proprietors that governments or prime ministers up till now have always chosen over the people and, and, and over victims of crime. It's, it's very close to, to disgraceful what the, the Prime Minister's position on this. OK, well, let's, let's stop on the principle for a second and then look at what is likely to happen turn back to, to John Whittingdale, we are now going to have a, a slug out uh, in the House of Commons where most MPs, um, certainly on, on, on the counting that I've seen in the papers, are actually on Hugh Grant's side rather than on the Prime Minister's side. Well, actually, I think what is happening is that as people have had a chance to read the detail of what is proposed and actually think about it, more and more doubts are emerging. I mean, I'm interested to see in the papers today a number of Labour MPs who are beginning to voice doubts about it. You've got very powerful voices like that of Shami Chakrabarti and some of the campaigners for civil liberties mm. who are voicing very serious concerns. And I think, you know, as people come to think about this carefully, they will realise the dangers of going down this road and they will want to try and find a way of getting the proper regulation we all want to see without Parliament having to pass laws over the press. Mm. I, think it's I, I think it's very important in this discussion to distinguish between those people who talk about freedom of speech and mean it sincerely and those who have ulterior motives or vested interests. We all know that the Prime Minister has close friendships with a lot of people at News International and that it suits his political agenda, as it does every Prime Minister for the last 60 years, to be in bed with the big press barons. John Whittingdale himself, and he's admitted it, uh, it you know, he's, he's self-advowedly has been Facebook friends with Elizabeth Murdoch, with, with, uh, with um, he's a great well, friend of Les Hinton, the chief executive I, of, of News International. That, that's so I think, it's, is, I think it's yeah, important well, well, to always establish where people come from in their okay, arguments. But that's, that, I, mean, I mean, that's no crime. Let me, no, let, and he's let, admitted let, it. Let, let, it's fine, but, yeah. but let, let me just ask so again I, about... I, I've spent, quick, I've quick, spent quick, seven years chairing the media committee. Of course I know these people. OK. Yeah, let's but you, let's you told me yourself that you are particularly good friends with Les Hinton, or you were. Oh, well, no, I, what, again, I told, what I told you, what I told you, can I just answer that? What okay. I told you, Hugh, was that I, my committee had unanimously said that Les Hinton had lied to Parliament, so I rather suspect that I'm not a very good friend of his. <laughs> anymore. Okay, well, let's put, let's put Les Hinton to one yeah. side, with great respect to Les Hinton, and just return to the tactics, because um, it has been suggested that what there is now going to be is an alternative draft bill put together by Labour, the Liberal Democrats, hacked off, etc., so that there will be at least one um, quite uh, urgent proposal in front of the House of Commons to, to act on. Apart from, you, you've done a petition, but is, is that what you're looking for? Well, when it comes to the intricacies of, of drafting bills, mm. you are now talking to a romantic comedy actor rather than a politician, so I may not, I may not be that expert on it, but what I can say with certainty is that 80% of the public, 90% in fact of Daily Mail readers, incredibly, favour um, 
independent regulation backed by statutory underpinning. Most of Parliament favours it, the victims favour it, and we have okay. a hacked off um, uh, a petition running unbelievably fast yeah. up. It's nearly okay. at 100,000 already right. in three days. So that's public opinion. And it will be very hard, in my opinion, for the Prime Minister to fly in the face of that just to satisfy okay. his friends in, in, in the media. Last question, John Whittingdale. Uh, in terms of how this is brought forward, we, is your committee now going to try and get across this ahead of you know, the inevitable parliamentary exchanges? Well, I'm, one of the jobs of my committee is to look at the uh, government's policy towards the media. And certainly we will want to look at the proposals in Lord Leveson, uh, the report. Mm -hmm. And I think we would like to hear from probably Hugh Grant, uh, but also from uh, some of those in the newspaper industry, some of the victims, and also people like Ofcom. Um, this is rather strange suggestion, but somehow Ofcom should have a role in regulating the press. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of different... Uh, people who I think we would want to hear their reaction and then we can make, reach a judgment about whether or not it's workable. All right. All right. John Whittingdale, Hugh Grant, thank you both for now very much.